welcome back to my channel so today i am back with another video and this time we're going to be talking about artificial nail care so if you follow me on my facebook group which is get nail 32 um i actually posted over the weekend um it was just a couple of screenshots from the um cosmetology book which is this one and this is the book that I used when I was in cosmetology, of course. And it is the, what is this? Um, is it Milady? No, it's actually a pivot point. They used to use Milady. Now they use pivot point. So like literally I was just looking at it while I'm sitting here. And literally like, you know, like we know that in cosmetology, um, you're not really gonna like you're gonna talk about nail care but it's gonna be probably like a week or two of your whole time being in cosmetology because there's literally only like a couple of chapters in here actually talking about nail care and i'm gonna tell you what those three chapters are in a second as soon as i find them where are they okay here they go there's literally one chapter yeah, there's literally one chapter in the cosmetology book and it talks about nail theory, natural nail care, and artificial nails. So it has three sections. So it's probably about, it goes from page 561 to 597. So not even 100 pages of talking about nails. So that really sucks. So I also seen that um people were talking about like the difference between going to cosmetology school and nail school the difference there is as like you guys know that i did cosmetology the reason why is because i wanted to just go ahead and get the whole certification you know over all of cosmetology because i was like what if maybe one day like i start liking hair or i like like makeup or something you know i want to go ahead and get that out the way instead of having to go back to school in the future um and also because i knew that i wanted to get my cosmetology instructor's license so i went ahead and did cosmetology but if you strictly just want to do nails i would recommend that you go to just a nail course or a nail school because if not you're literally going to be miserable because you're gonna have to do hair you're gonna have to do color you're gonna have to do makeup facials all of that stuff and you're gonna do like this much of nail stuff in cosmetology school um now when i was in cosmetology school like i focused on nail especially because our school went to a competition which is called skills usa i've talked about this before so i was having to practice for that competition um so i kind of you know like would tell my teacher like hey i'm gonna practice nails today hey i'm gonna do acrylics today hey i'm gonna do this so like i still did my other work but i kind of focused on nails mostly and i don't know how your teachers are gonna be if they're gonna make you like strictly do what everybody else is doing or if they would be like cool with you focusing on what you want to do but anyways we're gonna be talking about artificial nail care and this is chapter 14 in the pivot pivot point book um so i'm just gonna be pointing a few things out so first thing we know that nails artists are used to improve the appearance appearance of one's nails and to help conceal broken nails so that is the actual um definition in the book for artificial nails now there's several different kind of artificial nails and that includes acrylic nails which we know is our polymer and monomer which is powder and liquid we have gel wraps which is fiberglass silk linen or nylon and we don't use like there might be some people that use some but that's so old like i actually never um had to do those because once i started school they kind of like steered away from doing those um we also have gel nails which is the gel that you have to you have, actually have to cure it under the light sorry like y'all like literally my back is killing me so bad like i went to the gym and i guess i did something wrong and like i could barely even freaking walk it i thought it would hurt with me sitting but it actually doesn't it's just whenever i have to like bend over and then get back up like it hurts so freaking bad but anyways um and then that's three and then we know that just recently they came out with poly gel which is kind of like a combination of acrylic and gel and it has to be cured so i guess that would be our number four which is not in the book because it is fairly new so um the artificial service artificial nail service products 
our monomer which is our liquid and i have mine in a little bottle like this and it's literally the liquid that's purple we have polymer which is our powder and as you guys know i use the mia secret pink acrylic this is our polymer and it's going to be in an actual like powder form if you can see it here it's like actual powder so that's our polymer and when you combine those two together that's what creates our acrylic um and that's what i do i only do strictly acrylic nails um you're also going to need primer so our primer let me see the one i use comes like this and it's the bondex by opi and then i just have it in like this little stand that way it doesn't fall over and spills nail tips are also very important because well for me because i use nail tips um but nail tips they come in different colors they come in different lengths and shapes but the ones that i use most of the time would be my natural um nail tips that look like this and i have different ones um and then i also use clear you can use white if you're doing a french tip you can use the colored tips it can be pink purple orange yellow um and then they also have the ones that are already pre-designed which i've actually never used or if you don't want to use nail tips there's always forms and those look like this i'll show you here like forms look like this and these literally go like these you literally like take them off and it's just like a sticker and you would use these instead of using tips i know i know how to use them just because when i was in school i had to do um nails with forms for a competition but other than that i never really used them so you take them off you take the little piece off the back of them and for these they are pretty thick so I just put that aside, you wiggle it around so it's not flat, you're making it like into the shape of our natural nail, just like that. And then you would put this under someone's natural nail, making sure that it's under their natural nail. And then you just pinch the bottom. And then it has numbers and lines and those are just like a guide for how long you want them or how wide and that's pretty much it so this is an alternative for using nail tips now again there's people that learn how to do nails with tips and they just stuck to tips or there's people that learn how to do nails with form so that's what they stuck to so it's just whatever you feel more comfortable with and in that case i feel more comfortable with using nail tips um you're also going to use adhesive which is your your nail glue i use the kds glue which is it looks like this and that's just to apply your nail tips you would also use a dehydrant um i actually don't use it i only use the primer just because your um dehydrator which i have this one is by opi it basically removes the shine from the natural nail but i feel like you're doing that when you're removing the shine with your file so why am i having to go back and do a dehydrator and there and then a primer so i just do the primer if that makes sense but if you feel more comfortable doing a dehydrator and a primer then that's totally fine and that's totally up to you as well um you would also need brush cleaner and the one that i have is actually by tammy taylor and it looks like this and you would just put this in a little dap and dish fill it up and then put your acrylic brush in there to let it soak and that way all of the acrylic that's stuck in your brush will come out and they're actually missing a lot of stuff this is just literally the ones that they had so again that was monomer polymer primer nail tips nail forms adhesive um dehydrant and clean i mean brush cleaner and i'm also going to be leaving the definition of each one you know while i'm talking about it and then after that we have artificial nail service implements so these are actually tools that you're going to need so one is your little dappin dish and you're going to need this for your monomer or like for me i also use some for acetone so when i clean around someone's cuticle uh you would also need an acrylic brush so i just showed you guys the one that i use is my um what is this my alpha brush 
And then number nine, as you guys know, I just love their brushes. Um, that's really all I use is Alpha brushes. And I do have a promo code for them, which is Natalie10. So be sure to go check them out. And for beginners, I do recommend that you use a brush like a number eight or nine. And then as you get a little bit better, just work your way up to a bigger brush. That way you're able to control your product a lot better. Um, after that, we have nail files. And our nail files, um, they come in different grids. So like the ones I use are the 100-100 nail files. They look like this. And you do want to make sure that you use a new one for each client. And that's very important because you want to make sure that you're being very sanitary and you don't spread any bacteria, infections, none of that. So these are the ones that I use. And then these are used to, of course, shape the nail, to shorten the length of the nails. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And then after that, we have a buffer. Let me see if I have one down here. Okay, this one's already used, but we have a buffer. And this is just to make sure that you smooth the nail out and they come in rectangular abrasive blocks. That's what the book says. So they're rectangular ab abrasive blocks. And again, that's just to smooth out the nail um after that we have eyedropper i actually don't use an eyedropper i literally just pour my liquid into my dappin dish but there's a lot of people that like to use an eyedropper and put it into your monomer bottle and then drop it into your dappin dish i do have one but i don't use it because i just feel like it takes too long trying to like put the little eyedropper in there and dump it in your dappin dish so i just pour it in there um sorry like i'm literally out of breath okay so next we're going to be talking about nail tips so first it talked about you know the products and then we talked about the implements so your products as you notice are actually like products like your um, liquid your powder and then implements are actual tools like your nail brush your um your nail files your blocks so that might be you know if you're in school that might be a question like what are products and what are implements so i guess that's nice to know Um, let's see. Up next, we're going to be talking about nail tips. But before we talk about nail tips, we have a little alert. And it just looks like this. And it's like in big red letters. And it is talking about nothing more than MMA. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. But MMA is... We're, I'm just going to read the definition. And I'm also going to post it here. So, metal, met, I don't even know how to say it, but I'm going to spell it out on there. So, in the early 1970s, the Food and Drug Administration, which is the FDA, received a number of complaints of personal injuries associated with the use of acrylic monomer containing MMA. On the, on the, on the basis of an investigation of the injuries and discussion with medical exper experts, sorry, experts in the field of dermatology, the FDA concluded that liquid MMA is a poisonous substance, substance that should not be used in acrylic monomer. However, MMA is, oh, sorry, not MMA, but meta. Okay, okay, okay. However, I was going to say what? However, MMA is safe to use in acrylic powders. It's not safe in monomers, but it is safe in powders. And that word is methyl methacrylate. I think that's how you say it. But again, I'm going to make sure I spill it out really good so you guys can look it up and do some additional research. but 
that was just our big alert of the day i guess but anyways the next thing we're going to be talking about is nail tips which i already mentioned is one of our products that we're going to use for acrylic nails so your nail tips they come in different lengths and they also come in different sizes so the sizes are usually a number one through ten or they also come in zero sometimes so your zero or your number one will be the biggest nail tip and then your number 10 will be your smallest nail tip. So let's see. So it's a selecting the right size for each client's nail is critical. It's a critical factor in the success of these extensions. Nail tips are reasonably, reasonably strong and can be cut, filed, and polished. Avoid damaging plastic nail tips by using non-acetone nail polish remover so again nail tips come in sizes usually one to th one through ten or sometimes zero through ten and then again like i mentioned earlier they come in different colors different shapes different uh designs but i usually just use either clear or the natural ones and uh they also show you like or it has the process or procedures on how to prep the nail and all that good stuff but i'm gonna go ahead and skip over that because it's basically what i show you every time that i do a full set but um i think i'm just gonna like mention the like the main thing so basically you size the tips you prep the nail as you guys know usually i prep the nail and then apply the nail tip so they're doing a little a little backwards on here but whatever you feel comfortable with is fine once you prep and apply the nail tips that's when you cut them down after you cut them down you make sure you blend them in and you shape them and you um apply your primer so that's basically it okay so next we're going to be talking about acrylic brushes so this is one of our um implements that we're going to need to do acrylic nails and honestly i feel like other than having good products as far as like your acrylic which is the polymer and the monomer you have to have a really good acrylic brush like i can't say that enough because no matter how good your product is if you don't have a good brush like all of that acrylic is gonna get stuck to your brush like whenever i first started doing nails i was using like one of the little brushes that come in the kit kiss case and it or kit and it was literally like the most horrible brush ever like every time i picked up a bead like my brush would get hard and it was just horrible so it's good to go ahead and invest in a good brush again alpha brush they're really really good they're really inexpensive and i also have a promo code for them which is even better but i'm just going to show you the different parts of a brush so this is a number nine kalinsky brush in an oval shape as you can see it's oval and like this part of your brush is the handle so there's brushes that come with a wooden handle which this one is actual wood there's some that come with like plastic handles there's some that come with metal handles but i just use the ones with the wood handle so right here this part is your handle this right here which is that silver part is the barrel which is right here this part of your nail brush is the belly and then this part right here is the flags this right here is the flags so when you're doing a full set you use the belly of your brush to pat down the acrylic which is again this part right here and then you you use the flags of the brush to clean around the cuticle area which i would just rather call it the tip because when you when i say the flags you're probably like what but actually i didn't even know that's what it was called until right now that's why i was like flags but that's what it says that these are the flags i guess the sides i don't know but we're just gonna call it the tip so we use the belly to pat down our acrylic and then we use the very tip to clean around the cuticle or if you need to clean some acrylic from up under the nail so that's pretty much it again we have the handle the barrel the belly and the flags or the tip so that's pretty much it again i do recommend that you invest in a good brush because even literally the brushes from sally's 
I literally had to buy a new brush like every week because no matter how good I cleaned my brushes, like it was still acrylic stuck in my brush and then it would just like, sp the little hairs would just spread all over the place and it was horrible. Um, I did use like the Tammy Taylor brushes, which they shed really bad. I uh, also used the OPI brushes, which work really good, like really, really good. They last me a really long time. The only problem with those was that they were pretty expensive and then they were hard to get. Like I had some because that's what my school used. So I got mine from the school, but after I finished school, like I didn't know where to get them at. So that's it for our brush. And then, um, let's see, what else is there to talk about? Okay, so this would be an interesting thing to talk about. So here, I just sent this picture and I wanted to mention. So here, there's a picture about how your nail should be. I don't know if it's focused really good, but I'll try to find a picture or if not, I'll take a picture of this. But it's telling you how your acrylic should be applied. So as you can see, closer to the cuticle area, it says that it should be thin. This right here in the middle should be thick because that's where your apex is. This right here, this right here is your apex. So that should be the thickest part of your nail as far as the highest point. So I think I showed you last time. If I put my brush right there, literally that part right there should be the highest point on my nail. So same thing for my nails, as you can see here. I put the brush on the top of my nail and that right there is the highest point and that's your apex and then your nail tip should also be thin not super super thin but thinner than your apex so hopefully that helps and as always whenever you're applying your acrylic like literally i like to do the four ball method so that helps me because i'm able to build the apex that i want so i applied the first tip right in the middle brushing it down towards the tip i apply another one like right below that one like right here brush it down my third one is closer to the cuticle area brush it down and then my last one is right there in the middle to build my apex but when i'm brushing these beads back here down towards the tip especially the last one you want to brush like really really gently because all you're literally doing is just blending that acrylic in because you already have your thickness and you already have your product down at the tip you're just building your apex so you literally like leave all of that product back here but you're literally just blending in the rest of the acrylic and that's how you build your apex and you want to make sure that when you're working don't just look at your nails from right here like literally if i was facing this way like don't just look at your nails from the front make sure that you turn your fingers over to the side to look at your nail from the side and i always 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 say this but you have to look at your nail from the sides to make sure that you have a good arch because again you don't want your nail to just be like super flat like you literally don't want your nail to just be like like flat like this like this brush like that is so freaking ugly so make sure that you have a good stress area um and literally that's the last thing to the chapter like that's literally it it talks about nail wraps i guess we can talk about that even though not many people use them i'm just gonna read the definition so nail wraps are woven materials that are applied to the natural nail and or i mean sorry or nails with tips to add strength the material is held in place and an overlay created by applying several layers of thick adhesive called resin. The resin is cl clinically, or sorry, the resin is chemically hardened by the application of an accelerator. So honestly, I feel like it would be something like the gel resin. And the activator and actually the activator that i've been using is not by me a secret i do have my me a secret but i have this one as well and i think that this activator is actually for nail wraps it does the same thing that the me a secret one does but this one my teacher gave to me because again this is from when they used to do the wraps and she had a lot of it left over but let's see but yeah i think this is for an actual wrap so you would do like the little, I think I still had some, I might have threw it away, but it's like literally like this really thin, um, 
material, you cut it out into the shape of the nail, put it on the nail, you would do the gel resin, spray the activator, do another layer, spray the activator, and I honestly don't know how many layers, but that's really how you do it, and then you just go back and shape it, file it, buff it, and that's pretty much it, and again, it says that that is used over natural nails or tips to add strength, so let us know if you still do wraps, like, is that something you do, something you've done before? If so, like, how did you like it or why did you stop doing it? And then next, we're going to be talking about light cured gels. And we know that that's just the hard gel that has to be cured under the light. And it says this product is simply an acrylic gel that is applied to the nail plate after which the hand is placed under a special light. That, create, that creates a chemical reaction that causes the product to harden. This process is called curing the nail. This product is used to reinforce weak nails or can be used over tips to add sheen and strength. Manufacturers have created different gels to act as bonding agents for tips, nail builders or thickeners, and nail gloss for shine. It is fast and economically ec it is a fast and economic it is a fast and economical service for clients and an excellent way to help a client develop healthy strong nails always follow manufacturers directions carefully and that's literally the end to the chapter so it's really not even that many pages like literally that's oh wow Literally, I'm going to count the pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pages about artificial nails. And that included acrylic, gel, and the nail wraps. And literally, this is how much information there was about nail wraps and light cured. Like, that is absolutely ridiculous. Like like what and then there is more stuff about nails but it's like pedicures there's a section on male manicures a section on basic manicures infection control and safety there's a couple of definitions nail shape nail essentials natural nail care and then there's a lot of pages about or not a lot of pages but there's literally like three pages talking about um what is this infections nail disorders and conditions and then it also talks about nail growth so that's literally it for the nail chapter in the pivot point book and there's literally not a lot at all and then also if we look at this book like there's not even like it's so outdated that they don't even have like the coffin shape they only have the pointed oval round squared and and square wait scoble yes yeah, scoble and it just says, although nail growth is assorted, wait, although nails grow in assorted shapes and sizes from con convex to concave, wide to narrow, round to angular, there are five basic nail shapes, pointed, oval, round, uh, square, and squabble. Yep. And then they also have like nail essentials, which are just definitions. And they have disinfectant, which is a chemical pro product antiseptic which is your liquid soap they have septic products which is your liquid or sprays they have polish remover which is your acetone or non-acetone they have cotton balls um they have cuticle remover creams nail bleach which lightings or high percent hydrogen peroxide that's what nail bleach is like what would we use nail bleach for would it be like for when people get uh green spots on their nails or it tastes remove stains and whitening nails okay they have soaking solution which is liquid soap used with warm water and finger bowl and i guess that would be used when you're doing a manicure cuticle cream is a, just a moisturizer and it softens the cuticle um, skin and moisturizes brittle nails um, hand lotion which of course is a lubricant and it softens the skin and aids when providing massage manipulations a uh, base coat which is a colorless polish and it evens out the nail plate 
Hold nail colors to nail, prevent pigment from penetrating nail plates. As you guys know, whenever you do a regular polish on your nails or even gel polish, you do want to make sure that you use a base coat on your natural nails because if not, that polish will stain your nails, especially when you do like reds or greens or yellow, they will stain your nail bed. So make sure that you're using a base coat. Um, next, we have liquid polish, which is nail polish and it creates a colored effect we have a top coat or sealer uh colorless hard polish the it protects colored polish from chipping fading and peeling and in this book instead of calling it a gel top coat they call it a sealer um speed dry it's a drying agent spray or polish applied over top coat. And I think it's that spray that help that helps the nails dry. And they honestly never work. Um, they have nail conditioners, which is moisturizing ingredient applied to the nail to avoid dryness. They have nail mend fiber, which is mending material, which would include fiberglass, silk, linen, and nylon, also called fabric wraps, which is what we talked about. Um, and this would be applied to repair splits or cracks on the nail. Nail stringer, usually a clear polish applied to applied prior to the base coat, may contain stringing fibers, and this prevents the nail from peeling or sorry splitting or peeling. And then we have the liquid nail wraps, which is polish consisting of tiny stringing fibers more fibers than a nail hardener so we have nail hardener and liquid nail wraps um, and that just hardens and protects the nail and then they also have implements which that includes your emery boards which is used on a natural nail they have cuticle pushers uh, wooden sticks we have cuticle nippers nail and cuticle scissors nail brushes tweezers uh, buffers Yes. Mi papá la metió. ¿Por qué? I don't know. We have tweezers, blocks, buffer blocks, cosmetic spatulas. And I guess that's just like if you're using lotion or something, you scoop it out with the spatula instead of putting your finger in there. We have finger bowls and towels. And then your service equipment would be your nail table. And let me tell you this. Before you go out and spend hundreds of dollars on a nail table, especially if you're a beginner, you can use just like a regular nail table that you find at like a local like Goodwill or something, like just something small to start off with. And then you go up and buy something more expensive. But honestly, this table that I've been using for a while now, I oh, excuse me. But this table that I've been using for a while now, I literally bought it at what was it it was on the marketplace on facebook and it was 80 dollars. and just yesterday on my facebook group somebody posted that they got a a nail table for ten dollars and she could have got the uh pedicure chair for fifty dollars but she didn't have a truck or something like that but do not just go out and spend like all this money like you can literally find you a good and cheap table on an online yard sale or on the marketplace so before you go out and start looking on these big websites make sure you check Check your um your local little yard sale places to see if you find anything because I know I like to find me a good deal and I'm sure you do too. Um, after that we have nail service stool, so that would be used for either like instead of your chair, you can get a stool or even for pedicures, client's chair, and then they also have nail service cushion, which is this, and it's just like an armrest. And I actually got this from my local nail supply store. Um, wet disinfectant container, which is your barberside jar, which I have over here. We have electrical heater, which we don't use those. Um, but it's like to warm up your lotion. And I guess that would count. I guess mine would count as an electrical warmer for like my little monomer warmer. So I guess that would be one. Uh, glass containers, which would be used to hold your cotton, your cotton balls and other accessories. And then your lamp, which I use just a regular nail lamp that I got from my local nail supply store. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I guess we could also talk about client consultation, which is also part of the um, nail chapter. So, of course, um, it's it consists of one, two, three, four, five, five different 
what will we call it? Uh, it consists of five different things. So number one would be, of course, to always greet your clients, whether you're like, even if you're working on someone, you know, always take the time out to, you know, acknowledge them like, hey, girl, I'm almost done. You know, just give me a few minutes or hey, girl, I'm running a little bit late or hey, girl, you know, you can ha come have a seat, you know, just make sure you greet them so they don't just feel like awkward coming in. Um, so number one would be to greet your client, whether it's just a hey, whether it's a handshake, whatever you feel comfortable doing. But usually for me, it's literally like, hey, girl, you know, she have a seat and I start doing her nails. Or if I'm running a little bit behind and I have someone else in the chair, it's always like, hey, girl, I'm almost done. You know, you can have a seat. And then as you guys seen on my Instagram, I have a little basket with snacks. So I was sure to like post it on Instagram telling people like, hey, you know, I have snacks because I know a lot of them come to me like either before work or during their lunch break or after work. So they're hungry because it literally be like her stomach growling, then my stomach growling, and then they're both growling at the same time. So that's why I decided to just go ahead and get a little snack basket for them to just have something before they make it home. But anyways, um... After you greet them, you would have them sit down and then you ask, analyze, and assess. So this is where you would ask them like, um, you know, like, do you know what you want? Especially like if it's a full set or if it's their first time coming, like, do you know what you want? Do you want acrylic nails? Do you want a manicure? Do you want gel polish? Do you want, you know, like, what is it? So that's when you found out then. So you start asking questions and they tell you what they want. Um... And then also you would analyze your client's snail for any infections, any cuts, because of course, if they have like a really bad infection, you don't want to work on them. You want to uh, recommend them to a physician because you don't want to, you know, make it any worse. And you also don't want to spread any germs and bacteria around your work area. So number three would be to agree. So basically, that's just when you come to an agreement, like, okay, so we're going to be doing your acrylic set. You want coughing nails. You want this color. And that's pretty much it. So you come to an agreement. And then deliver is just literally you just doing the nails. And then the most important thing of all times that you're going to have to remember when you're in the beauty industry, whether it's nails, whether it's hair, makeup, whatever it is, you want to make sure that you rebook your clients, rebook your clients. That's really important because that's how you keep them coming that's how you get them in the rotation of every two weeks every two weeks every two weeks and that's how you get a steady clientele especially if they like your work you can they're gonna be like okay girl let, let me go ahead and rebook sometimes you might not even have to ask them like my clients they're like nope i'm not getting out of this chair until i book my appointment because if i forget you forget and then i have to wait another week because my spot's gonna get taken up so make sure that you remember to rebook your clients before they walk out of your shop because if not you're gonna forget they're gonna forget and it's gonna be a disaster and then again that just gets them in the rotation of coming in every two weeks or every three weeks or whatever you want to do and then also if you are in the process of trying to get more clients i know this is like a lot of information but if you're in the process of getting clients you want to make sure i don't even know where my business cards are but you should try doing something like a little rewards card. Um, I think I talked about this a while back. So basically what you could do is like give your clients a little business card. Um, I think I still have my old ones. These are my little old business cards. Um, they just look like this. And it has my information on it. So. But I just had my little business cards and it has my phone number and the address and my name, my email. And then I had like a website, kind of like a portfolio. And on the back, you could literally have, like, I'm literally going to draw on this. Let me see. Like, you could literally do something. And I'm pretty sure they have them. If you go on, like, Vista Print, they have, like, rewards cards. Or I can't remember what they call them. But you could literally do something like um, five referrals. How do you spell referrals? Equals free manicure or something like that. And then you can have like do, 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 and do. So one, two, three, four, five. Like something like, like literally, I think I spelled referrals wrong. But just like literally just something. I, I don't know, like refer a friend for a free manicure. Refer a friend. Refer five people and get free bling nail. Refer a client or something like that. 
and you would have like either five little stars and you could either like hole punch it every time somebody come in or you could literally have like maybe five lines and every time that they refer someone of course that person would have to tell you like hey you know jasmine referred me so next time that jasmine comes and she has her little business card you would just like initial it or something so it then whenever they get five initials by you then that's when they get their free manicure or their free um nail design or just whatever you want to do you know whatever is convenient to you you also don't want to lose a lot of money but you do want to take into consideration that that person just brought you five other clients So that's a good way to, you know, bring in clients. But the biggest way to bring clients in is, of course, social media. Social media is taking over the world. So you posting your work and making, making sure that you have good lighting, making sure that you use your hashtags, making sure that, you know, you have your family or your friends sharing your post. Um, and people are going to see your work and they're going to be like, oh, she's good. Like, you know, how do I make an appointment? And just make sure that you either have like, instructions like you know uh text me for appointments or dm me for appointments like have your information out like that that way people can just contact you and they can come get their nails done so again um make you can do the little referral card or just simple and easy just post on facebook or instagram and just have everybody share your stuff and then another thing that is really like the biggest 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 thing of all is word of mouth so like for me i think that was like the main thing i never really just had to advertise myself which is a blessing um i didn't really have to like go out and hand out business cards or any of that because like people would see like i don't know like i started doing my little sister's nails so they would see my sister's now and they'd be like who did your nails and she's like oh my sister like you know follow her on her social media or then that person would like Somebody would see her nails and my other client would show off her nails. And like that person would tell that person and that person would tell the other person. And like everybody kind of just finds out because if you do good work, people are going to ask. People are going to want to know where you got your nails done. They want to know how much they charge. They want to know how they can get an appointment. So you could even give your clients business cards. So like for sure, for sure, if their nails look good, people are going to ask. And then if your clients have business cards, like some of your business cards, they can just be like, hey, you know this is her business card so you do want to make sure that you invest in some business cards so you can pass them out and then also even if you want to like um make sure that you keep your nails done as well and when you go out people will ask you and you can just be like oh girl you know i do nails here go my business card you know you can contact me to make an appointment that plain and simple so I know I gave you guys a lot of information today, but that's literally everything that was in the Pivot Point Cosmetology book. I do have a nail book, which is the Milady Nail Technology book, and this one is a little bit more in depth. But since I posted those screenshots out of this book, I wanted to just go ahead and talk about that. Um, if you haven't seen the screenshots, I will just leave the link in the description to my Facebook group so you guys can go see it. But that is Get Nail 32. And then I also have like a little study guide for when I was taking my, I think this is actually for skills. And it's literally like a million questions about nails. And it comes with the answers in the back. Let me see. It's literally 176 questions. Y'all, like, I still even got all these, like, we used to do a lot of vocabulary work. So I still have, like, all of mine. And these are literally from college, from when I was doing cosmetology in college. But, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I Hopefully, I gave you guys a lot of useful information. Uh, but I actually have a client on the way, so I have to go. But I hope um, that you guys enjoyed. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at GetNo32. And also, if you are new, welcome to my channel. Uh, make sure that you hit that subscribe button because once I hit 200K, I will be doing a giveaway so you can be a part of that. Um, and I do have a video on the rules if you just scroll down through my videos. I had posted it like last week. So I hope you guys have a good day and thank you for watching.